Welcome. I hope you are having a wonderful night, dear viewer. Tonight, I will be telling some terrifyingly scary stories. Make sure to leave your feedback on the comments so I can make this the best experience for you. And if you have any stories you would like me to tell, you can send them through the link in the description. Let's begin. I'm new to Reddit, but I figured I'd share some of my experiences to see if anyone has had anything similar happen to them. I'm a 35-year-old male and currently live in Phoenix, Arizona. I'll try to make this brief and go over a few of my experiences. The first time I can remember anything like this happening to me, I was probably around 15. My family was in the process of moving into a new apartment. Not much was left in our old place besides the essentials my bed and television. I had decided to stay the night by myself so I could watch the basketball game. Everything that night seemed the same as it always had. I remember watching the game and opening one of those family-sized Doritos bags. I set the bag down after I ate a few chips, and a few moments later, the bag flew halfway across my room. I picked the bag up and went back to watching the game. I didn't think much of it that night. Maybe I didn't want to think about it at all. At our new apartment, the only thing strange I remember seeing was out of the corner of my eye. My dad had a big, bright fish tank. I would routinely see the light being completely blocked by something walking in front of it. It would happen while I was in the kitchen doing dishes and also while I was in my bedroom playing Xbox. One other thing happened to me that I can't explain. I got really lightheaded one time and my dad laid me on the couch in the living room. All I could see was white. I heard we are all around you. It scared the living crap out of me. And I just remember thinking I was too young to die. Fast forward about six years. I had just met my future wife. And after a few months of dating, I had decided to move in with her. We were laying in bed one afternoon, just hanging out. I heard a deep male voice directly in my ear. Tell me to get out. I looked at her trying to process what I had just experienced. Did you just hear that? I asked. I heard something, but it wasn't loud enough to make out, she told me. We were less than a foot apart, and it was as if someone was yelling directly into my ear, but she couldn't hear what it had said. A few months later, she was driving me to work around 2 a.m. What she told me sent chills down my spine. She said she had woken up earlier in the night and that something was talking to her. She couldn't understand what it was saying. It was a language she wasn't familiar with. The thought of something I couldn't see that close to where I was sleeping was very unsettling. About a year later, we moved into a new home. I awoke one night to a shadow figure standing above me. I reached out to grab what I perceived to be an intruder, and it took a step back and disappeared. I never went back to sleep that night. On another occasion, I was alone in the house with my tablet one evening. I was lying Ed with my bedroom door open. I heard footsteps in the hall coming towards my bedroom. There were two problems with that. The first was that I didn't believe anyone else was in the house. And the second was that I should have heard the footsteps long before I did. They started halfway down my hallway. I watched the door and a few moments later, a tall shadow figure passed by. I got up again thinking there was someone in my house that shouldn't be. Both rooms outside my room had their doors closed and there was nowhere else to go. I opened the bathroom door and it was empty. I opened the door to my spare bedroom and it was empty. Six years later, I find myself in a new house with a new experience. It was late one night, probably around 11 p.m. My wife was asleep in our bedroom and I was sitting on a bed in our spare bedroom with the door open. From where I was sitting, I could see down our hallway. It was dark, but not pitch black. As I sat there scrolling on my phone, something out of the corner of my eye caught my attention. I looked into the hallway and it was empty. I went back to whatever I was doing on my phone. A few moments later, I found myself seeing the same thing. I look and nothing's there. So now I'm back to my phone, but this time I'm trying to focus out of the corner of my eye and figure out what's going on. I see something crawling in my hallway. It's about 10 feet away from where I'm sitting. 
I look and nothing. I go back to my phone, still trying to view it from my peripheral. Now I see it standing up. It's a woman wearing a white dress. It's walking in a circle and I'm trying to process what's happening. It sprints at my door. And just as it gets there, I hit the bedroom light and it's gone. Now I'm sitting there wondering if I just imagined it. The hair on the back of my neck is standing up and my heart is beating out of my chest. I have posted other stories about my time doing trauma scene cleanup. I was asked to post another story, and while it was not a typical ghost story in the normal sense, it was something of an oddity. Back then, I managed a crew that went into buildings where there had been homicides, suicides, and many other ways people had died or been seriously injured that caused a need for our services. We would do our best to sterilize the environment, not just by removing biohazards, but also by making it visually sterilized so that if anyone walked into the building, it would just look like a construction or remodeling project. This particular call was on a stormy day, dark and gloomy, right out of a scene from any scary movie that you can imagine. Off in the distance was the rumble of thunder, heavy rain and cold. We get a dispatch call to a home on the hillsides of a neighborhood that is part of a larger city. For privacy reasons, I will not say which city, but this particular area I am not too familiar with. It seemed like a really, really, really rich neighborhood in an area where you would expect wealthy individuals to live. The dispatch said that a representative was going to meet us on site to release the property to us. I believe the guy we met was an attorney or real estate broker. He signed the paperwork. We walked inside and he said anything we needed to dispose of was fine. Just keep a record. He gave me his fax number and said, just fax the invoice for our services and any paperwork, and his office will take care of anything we need. He handed us the keys and said to just lock the door from inside and mail the keys back when we were done. My crew starts setting up, suiting up, and getting ready to do what needs to be done. I go back out to my truck and start to get ready. We normally used to take 35 mm photos of before and after. Prior to this, we used to use those old Polaroid instant cameras, but we switched to 35 mm film cameras for quality. We did this not for taking photos of gore, but for documentation and to cover our butts, as we had one case where our crew was accused of theft. It turned out not to be true, and the missing item was taken by a family member before we arrived, the house. Well, like I said, it was in a very wealthy neighborhood on the hillsides of a very rich neighborhood. It looked well-maintained from the outside. I remember the driveway was one of those that you can drive in on one side, and it looped around back to the street like a U-shaped driveway, but it swerved as it went up to the house. I'm not sure if you can picture that in your head, but it was a long driveway anyway. It was a very large three-story home. Since it was on a hillside, you entered the house on the middle level, there was one level down and one level up. Inside, my crew was a little confused. We were used to seeing fresh blood and fresh damage like bullet holes, broken doors, and the typical murder scene. Yes, this house was the scene of a murder. I never got information on who had murdered or how many deaths there were. The representative of the house didn't state anything. It was strictly business. Sign here, send me an invoice. And that's it. Since he already stated that it was okay to dispose of anything needed and just make inventory, there was no need to go into details about anything else. My crew eventually enters the master bedroom, and you can tell this is where it happened. The very odd thing was that it wasn't a new crime scene. It probably happened about a decade or more ago. My crew consisted of three crew members and myself. Two of them started getting the creeps almost immediately. They were newer crew members, so it's kind of expected that the new guys get creeped out at scenes. I noticed they did whatever they could to stay out of the house and run back to our trucks in the stormy weather to take trash or get supplies. Having done this job for more than six years at this point, I know the scene isn't fresh. The dried blood had almost turned black, but what really stuck out was the age of everything inside the home. It was half empty, like most of the furniture that you would expect to be there, 
wasn't in that bedroom. It was like they left it sometime in the late 1970s or early 1980s. I remember thinking how old everything looked in contrast to the outside. The outside looked like it was kept up very well, but inside there was a layer of dust. And some areas had cobwebs, like you would see in some creepy movie. We noticed that the blood may have leaked to the floor below, so we went to inspect where the blood had pooled up at one time, and to see if it went through the downstairs. We located a dark spot in the ceiling below the master bedroom. The room below was like a den or bar area. I told my crew we were going to have to remove all the carpet in the master bedroom, and maybe the subfloor, clean the studs, and remove the drywall and insulation in the ceiling below. We also noticed that it had leaked down to the floor in the den below, so we removed a portion of the wood flooring below as well. During our work, a car drove up the driveway and flashed its lights at us. I went out, thinking it might be the representative. I went outside to meet with the car and see what he wanted. I go out and notice it's not the same guy, but an older gentleman probably in his 70s in a very nice Mercedes. Almost immediately, he starts yelling at me. What the hell are we doing here? I let him finish and tried my best to explain why we were here. I told him I could show him the dispatch paper and the signature, but if he wanted to call the police, I would wait here with him for them to arrive and check us out. I think by saying that I put him at ease, he glanced at the paper and said something like, why are you here today? Why are you here today? Why now? I can't really go into detail, but just say that we are there to clean up after an accident. He looks at me confused. He said that the house has been empty for many, many years. I told him, well, we were called out to clean up and remove damage. He looked at me very seriously and said no one had stepped foot in that house in years. I told him, well, maybe it happened years ago and we are just now getting it sorted. I knew he knew what I was saying. I know. Why? Are they finally dealing with this now? I said. I am sorry. I don't have any answers, and I am just there to do what we were told to do. He said he was sorry for the way he acted towards me, and that he lives next door and sometimes has to chase teens away. He just wanted to make sure we weren't causing trouble. I asked him if he knew the family that lived there. He said again. No one has been in that house in years. He did say something terrible happened in there many years ago. It was tragic, and it has been empty ever since. He looked distressed, talking to me in the storm and said, well, he'd better get back home. Our time in the house wasn't that long, as it didn't take long to do what we were there for. I did one last walk around the house, as my crews were back in the trucks, putting things away and removing their protective gear. I took some more pictures with my camera and looked around for curiosity's sake. The whole house was eerie and very creepy, like entering a tomb. Some of the lights didn't work, so some of the rooms I entered were dark, empty spaces. And you can see that the carpets, drapes, and remaining furniture that was left behind were old. Not old as in worn out, but old as in old style. I remember seeing some pink dog stuffed animals on the floor next to a lamp. I don't know why that stuffed animal gave me the creeps. We leave the house, and I get back to my office to finish up the paperwork and give everything to our billing gal, including the film roll. We had a service that would come every other day and collect our film for processing. None of those pictures came out. It wasn't empty film. It looked like something tried to process it, like blotches, like when back in the day you would accidentally leave film in your checked luggage at the airport, and it would ruin the film. The photos that were taken were browned out and smudged so much that you couldn't make them out. Luckily, we didn't need the photos for billing, but we couldn't explain what happened. Some people say that maybe the storm ruined the film, but we weren't directly near the thunder. It was miles away. We just heard it in the distance. That was the house that no one wanted to enter. And my only guess was that the family had finally decided to sell the property after all the years after the murder. I grew up in an older house in the suburbs of New Jersey. The house was either close to or over 100 years old, and my parents finally sold it around two years ago. 
The other night, I was discussing my ghost experiences with my family, and I thought I would share them here. Just to preface, these experiences happened to me as a teenager in the 2010s, and my mother, who is a devout Catholic, never believed me or my siblings about our experiences until she had an experience weeks before putting the house on the market. And the experience was also for her contributing. Reason why my parents decided to sell the house, because my mom was terrified and wanted to leave, along with my siblings and me all being either in college or out of the house with full-time jobs. Our house was always a little creepy and my childhood friends still tell me to this day that they hated having sleepovers at my house because they would be up all night with an unsettling feeling. Some of them have also told me that they didn't believe in ghosts until they had a sleepover at my house and my house made them believers. None of them have ever had a direct experience in my house, but they have told me that the unsettling feeling felt like someone was watching them and they couldn't ever shake it. My most distinct experience happened when I was 14 years old and in bed. I was on my phone reading a book and had left the door slightly cracked because my door was really old and would frequently get stuck closed to the point where several times before I learned to never fully close it, that I had to call for help and needed someone on the other side to bust it down to. Get me out. And after the umpteenth time of my dad having to rescue me, it became a rule that I couldn't fully close the door in case there was a fire or an emergency or anything of that nature, and I needed to escape. Anyway, I was on my phone reading, facing towards my wall. It was about 11 p.m., and I turned over to face the rest of my room, and I saw a person standing in my room by my dresser. Being a big sister, I immediately thought that it was my little sister being annoying and sneaking into my room to steal my things. I called out to her and told her to get out of my room and to leave me alone. Being in a really old house, sound travels really easily. And at the time we shared a wall. She yelled back from her room that she has no clue what I'm talking about and that she's still up doing homework in her room. We later found out about the previous owners. My parents bought the house originally from one of their friend's parents who had lived there for 50 years. My parents were speaking to their friend about the ghost experiences and she immediately joked that it was her grandma and grandpa saying hi. Apparently, when their friend's grandparents reached their older ages, her parents moved them into the house and acted as their caretakers. And my room was the room that they stayed in, and both of them died in the house. This is my first time posting in this subreddit, and I have a couple more stories about the house if you guys are interested in hearing about them. All of my siblings have always maintained that our house was haunted, but any time we tried to talk about it to our parents, my mom would shut us down and state that ghosts don't exist and that we are allowing our imaginations to go wild. One instance of her explaining away things was one time we were both sitting at the kitchen table and all of a sudden, all of the dishes in the cabinets started rattling. I was used to this happening because it always happened at night and was part of the evidence I tried to present to my mom about how the house was haunted. She being notorious for going to bed at 9 p. Every night had never experienced it, and she was shocked that it was happening. She tried to look around and see what was causing it, and ended up just deciding that it was the house's air conditioner switching on, despite it being in the middle of winter. Right after she said that, the person started walking towards me, and I couldn't move or say anything. The feeling of absolute terror I still remember to this day. I couldn't make out any features on the person, and it happened so fast that I didn't even think to turn on a light. Right before the ghost was able to approach me, our two cats pushed open my door, jumped onto my bed, and freaked out. This was super out of pocket behavior for them because their beds and litter boxes were in the basement, and that's where they preferred to hang out. My cat scared this thing away, and once it left, they ran out and went back down the stairs. I remember being numb with shock, then convincing myself that I was going crazy and that I made the entire thing up or that I was already sleeping and having a nightmare. Then going to sleep, I wasn't going to tell anyone about what happened until the next morning at the breakfast table when my sister asked me why I asked her why she was in my room last night and that she thought it was strange that I asked her that. I told her about what happened to me the night before 
and my dad, chiming in while eating breakfast, said that he was in the basement doing some late work in his office down there, and stated that the cat started going crazy and wouldn't stop meowing at him until he got up and opened the basement door to let them out, and that he was super confused about their behavior. 